You shouldn't live together before marriage. Is that Bible truth or just church truth? It's a really insightful question that someone recently asked me. Is it Bible truth or just church tradition that you should get married before you live together or start a family and have children? Uh, Good question. I know this isn't 1950s America. Now, most couples, even a people who are very spiritual, consider themselves Christians. Um, they live together before marriage. Many of them have children and start families before marriage. And so the, the question is, is God okay with that or is he not? Well, the Bible is the one source of truth that never changes. Now, it's true. Churches you know, come up with their traditions. They make up their rules. They definitely did that in Jesus' day and it still happens in our day. So is that... Is that like a church thing, an an American cultural thing from a few generations ago, or is that actually a biblical thing? Here's the answer. If you would look for a passage that tells us about living together before marriage, you would have to look for a long time. The Bible doesn't have a lot of specific direction. I mean, some people look to the institution of marriage in Genesis chapter 2, where it says, quote, a man will leave his father and mother, be united to his wife, and the two will become one flesh. And so some people would say, well, you see, for, you know, first you leave your father and mother's home, you're, you're united in marriage, then you become one flesh, you connect sexually in this new family that you've begun. And, and there's something to that, kind of the order that God lays out, but it's not, you know, sometimes we leave our father and mother's house to take a job, or to get our own place, it's not necessarily in our culture connected to the act of marriage. So, you know, before we tell people that they're sinning, we might need something a little more specific than that. So, is there anything in the Bible that says you can't share the same address as a couple unless you're married? The the answer is, uh, not exactly. So, why have Christians for so long been so nervous about the idea of, of couples sharing the same home, sharing the same bed, sharing the same bathroom, sharing the same life when they haven't made that commitment as husband and wife until death do them part. You know, when I'm talking to couples who are living together before marriage, I often open my Bible to Hebrews chapter 13. Because in verse 4, God says this, Marriage should be honored by all. And so marriage, this commitment where we try to imitate the love between Jesus and his church, it should be honored. We should hold it. It's not just a piece of paper. Okay? If anyone ever says that to you, oh, marriage is just a piece. No. God says here, marriage, this commitment should be honored by all and the marriage bed should be kept pure. So the marriage bed, sexual intimacy, this beautiful gift that God came up with. A gift that he celebrates often in this book. The gift that he gives to every couple for their wedding. The marriage bed should be kept pure. And that's the thing. If you or someone you know is living together before marriage, can you look me in the eye? Most importantly, can you look Jesus in the eye and say, we've kept the marriage bed pure? And I have a big hunch. The answer is, listen, I'm married. I like my wife. (laughs) She likes me. And, you know, when we're in the same house, when we're sharing the same bedroom, bathroom, and we're sleeping in the same bed, we're attracted to each other and that's a good thing from a good God, right? And obviously, couples who aren't married just yet, they say there's that same attraction, that same desire, that same passion. So I just got to ask you, honestly, if the Bible says we should flee from temptation, come on, like, aren't you putting yourself in an incredibly tempting situation? Does your own history as you look back in the past, like, yeah, it happens. 
And so if it happens, the question is, what should happen next? Right? If a person is constantly falling into the temptation of drunkenness, I would say to them, you probably shouldn't go into a bar. Right? If that temptation is, is too strong for you, you, sh- you should not be there. And if you are unable to keep the marriage bed pure, not, not just sexual intercourse, but so many of the, the beautiful ways that people connect with sexual desire, if you can't keep that pure and spotless and holy, well, we might think, well, yeah, you know, it happens. <laughs> we, we mess around. But do you know how this passage ends? Marriage should be honored by all and the marriage bed kept pure for God will judge. God will judge the adulterer and all the sexually immoral. Right? So, listen, sex before marriage is a sin. It's not moral in the eyes of God. I know it's normal in the eyes of men, but it's not moral in the eyes of God. So here's some good news. Jesus forgives. If you've messed this up, if you've gotten yourself into a complicated situation and there's there's rent and there's the commitment, if it's messy, I just need you to know you can come to Jesus, confess whatever sin has happened, and he forgives. He, he makes you pure so that God will not judge you. He washes you clean of your sexual immorality so God can look at you and smile upon you. Jesus was known as the friend of prostitutes and sexual sinners. He he did life with people who messed this up all the time. And then in love, he said to them, now go and leave your life of sin. So maybe you're watching this video right now because God wants to speak to you. Maybe you've never heard this passage or you forgot about it. God loves you. He forgives you. Now go. Leave your life of sin. If it costs you mileage driving back to your place at night, if you got to pay two rents until the commitment comes and you're married and God blesses that sexual relationship, listen, you will never regret obedience. God isn't making up rules about sexuality to rob you of anything. He wants what's best for you. Believe him. All right? So, is today the day to share this video with someone who needs it? Maybe. Is today a video, um, a time for you to, to ponder this video, to come to God in repentance? Maybe. Is this a day for all of us to receive Jesus' amazing forgiveness? For sure. Marriage should be honored by all. Let's honor marriage. The marriage bed should be kept pure. Let's do so. For God will judge the adulterer and all the sexually immoral. Before it's too late, let's come to God, receive his grace, and respond accordingly.